In today's video, we tackle a striking question that weighs in on many minds, the origin of skin variations and the significance of different skin colors, particularly the striking difference of white skin. Yeah, we'll get into that. Our focus is unraveling the historical roots of this aspect of human diversity, shedding light on forgotten narratives and their relevance today. Our presenter in this video gets into enlightening books and perspectives, emphasizing the importance of understanding this history in our modern context. As we confront climate change and its impact, this knowledge becomes increasingly vital for all individuals, particularly those with melanated skin. If you are ready to have this conversation, let's embark on this journey together, uncovering key insights along the way that will resonate long after the video ends. Hit that like button and let's get started. Just take it back to 500 years since when Cristobal Colon first came here. And this is what we're dealing with. But to do that, you have to understand the background of the people that you're dealing with. To look at them and understand that they have been put in a certain position of power. And as James Baldwin said, I, I put his piece up, you know, you know, ignorance plus power is dangerous. Their time, people of European descent, their time is up. Don't need to go to the history of it. I would recommend that you go to my bio and go to my um, my webinar series. I did a four-part webinar series on on a movie I was in called Race War. And it's webinar number two, Origin of the Caucasoid. We follow their history through the mountains of the Caucasus, through the mountains of the Himalayas, who were impacted by their climate in hostile conditions and lived like that for a couple thousand years. And this is what be a, the fear of the foreign, fear of anything that doesn't look like you and walk like you and talk like you. And this is why some of the members of Congress, the, 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 the more fragile ones, are trying to pass laws now, saying that it is the European architect of society that should be America. In other words, people who speak Spanish, you must become like me. Uh, people who pray to Allah, who are Muslim, you must pray to my God. For those of you who are of Asian descent, you must follow our rules. And black folk, we don't even know what to do with y'all because you've been uh, denying us from the beginning. But what the problem is this, is that with the movement of peoples of melanation, to America and to Europe. This is happening in Europe. You want to know what I'm talking about? Don't believe a word I say. Check out a book that's titled The Strange of Europe. It's written by Douglas Murray. It wasn't written for us. <laughs> it was written for peoples of European descent, particularly people in Europe to understand what's happening through immigration. Here in the United States, the same story applies. And that is that, and again, don't believe me, just get a book called The Birth Earth. B-I-R-T-H-D-E-A-R-T-H. Don't believe a word I say. Study this for yourself. Understand what's happening. Because The Birth Earth by Ben Wattenberg tells us that immigration worldwide. Now, mind you who they are now. Re re remember who they are. They were the first and original illegal immigrants in the world. They did not come with anything to give. Emma Lazarus, in her poem, Statue of Liberty says it. 
Give me your tired, your homeless criminals. I mean, she may not have said that, but I'm saying it. You're criminals. You're sick. That's who came to America. Starting in 1870, not in the 1900s. It started in 1870 when they tried to displace black people who were rising from their uh, a position of enslavement. They were rising, and in order not to give the jobs and the education and everything to African people, they began to bring Europeans in in order to hire them. They had as little regard for the immigrants they were bringing in. Because, you see, when the poor Europeans were going to Ellis Island, rich Europeans coming to America, the business people did not go to Ellis Island. They went to the Soundview section of the Bronx. That's where their boats went, to Soundview. The poor people went to Ellis Island. We're dealing with conditions that we now face that have been going on for a very long time. And what has happened is that because of the nature of their mutation from the original melanated African, the Grimaldi of Europe, transforming themselves into the Cro-Magnon, which is the ancestor to the Eurasian, because the Cro-Magnon now is going to mate with Cro-Magnon instead of going back to the archetype. You see, although a lot of folk, you may not like what I'm about to say, but this happens in nature all the time. We've seen it happen with gorillas. We've seen it happen with peacocks. We've seen it happen with roaches. We've seen it happen with plants. And that is that when you lose that nutrient, the ability to process melanin, you become albinoid. You begin... you become deficient in that nutrient, the process of producing that molecule we call melanin. When you become deficient in that, nature demands that you make up for it somehow. And the way it helped the Africans survive in that ice age for thousands of years was to depigment the skin but in so doing, they also took away a lot of the melanin content within, known as eumelanin, which became in them what we call pheomelanin, P-H-E-O-M-E-L-A-N-I-N. -E and so they come back down across, but they only mate with themselves. So what ha what's happening now is that a mutant is commingling with a mutant which is taking the product further and further away from the archetype of humanity. Because plants were born to be green, humans were born to be black. That's science. That's not personal. I'm not speaking in terms of domin a uh, 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 superior and inferior. That's not the science of this. That's the emotion. The science of it basically drops the dominant gene and the recessive gene. And everything that black folk have is dominant. Complexion of skin, pigmentation of skin, pigmentation of eyes, curly hair, the body is melanated. It has a certain morphology or structure. That is how the creator, however you want to view the creator, he or she, said, this is what I want the human family to look like, and that's how they'll survive on this earth. But no one took into account Africans going into an area that is going to be hit with an ice age which it did. And because of that, the first thing that every Eurasian, be you European or Asian, if you're in a northern climate and you lost the ability to properly process your melanin production, the first thing you should have done 
when you came back to the southern lands was to commingle with the original archetype people in order to keep your pro your progeny, your children, your your descendants on the road to existence. But they didn't. They commingled with themselves moving themselves further away from the archetype who is the African. And in so doing, they created a chain of events. And the chain of events are now at their breaking point, 2021. It's done. Number one, you see all this region. Okay, fam. We have to ask ourselves, if you feel that way towards us, why are you moving in our neighborhood? Well, they have no choice. You notice many of them are young. And the reason why they're moving back into the black neighborhoods is because their communities are dying. Read an article, Sabrina Tavernisi. T-A-V-E-R-N-I-S-E. -E. Don't believe a word I say, fam, because this is all science right here. What I'm looking at right now, I am not surprised. In fact, Dr. Clark would often say, I'm surprised that you're surprised. So 26 states out of the 50 states of the United States, more people, people of European descent now, more people are being, then are being born. If you read the book by Pat Buchanan, it's called Of the West. Now, he's a Republican. He was running for president. He told this story. So those three books I'm telling you about, The Birth Dearth by Ben J. Wattenberg, uh, what I just told you now, Of the West by Pat Buchanan, the book by Douglas Murray, The Strange of Europe, and there are others, but I'm just citing those three so that it gives you a place where you can go if you're interested in more research on what's actually happening and why this is at such a frantic pace right now. It, it, it is science. It's not personal. And basically what you see happening right now is the fact that there are towns all across this country that are down. They're numbing. They are no longer there. They are not reproducing themselves. And with the young people leaving the community as they are, Iowa, Ohio, as they're leaving the communities, they're leaving the communities to die. Alone. And so they're moving into black neighborhoods because that's the neighborhood, really, that has the flavor. They're leaving their own because they know their neighborhood's time. But what, what is happening? Okay, number one, melanoma. There is a book titled Saving Your Skin, Barney, uh, Kenneth, and Patricia Lawler. It talks about the fact that melanoma is one of the major causes of amongst peoples of European descent. And it's happening as we speak. The second reason is because there is a very serious problem in the reproductive system. Remember we talked about the incels? Well, now that's a serious problem. That's cutting down their production rate right now. But not just that. But there is, because of the, the lack of melanin in their reproductive organs, and they've studied this in terms of studying the cell and the eggs that are produced within peoples of Europe descent, and they are deficient. It is melanin in the sperm that gives the electricity to the tail. It is the melanin in the female egg that gives it its magnetism. So you have that electromagnetic relationship that once the sperm is released, its purpose is to find the egg. The purpose of the egg is to make sure that she can draw that sperm to her to fertilize her egg because that's the purpose. And so as we go through this process, family, melanoma, okay, skin cancer, they die at 
large rates, it's a global warming. It's going to even become more as time goes on. The cases of melanoma are skyrocketing, but nobody's talking about that because they understand what we all would understand, what they would have to say if we understood. This is science, family. The inability to reproduce. They've done studies on this. And the third factor that I'd like to cite is drugs. The elder generation, as you mature, you don't take care of your body. You get osteoporosis, lack of melanin in your skeletal system, uh, impacts you, causes a great deal of pain. Arthritis, you see the commercials on TV about, uh, you know, arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis and all the rest. That's what's happening. And they're taking opioids. And they were given opioids. And the pharmaceuticals didn't care about them. These were people of European descent. Didn't care about them. Just gave it to them like candy. They got hooked. You see, when they brought drugs in America and put it in the black neighborhood, they weren't able to understand that it's not going to be too long before y'all get hooked. They figured, well, well, it's amongst blacks, and Hispanics, and, you know, who cares? We'll make money. But what they didn't realize is that their children would come into the black neighborhood in order to purchase the drugs that they were on themselves. Not to mention meth, amphetamines, and all the other things that they're into, they're out in large numbers. So with all of those concepts in place, coming up out of French, here's where we're going to go science on this, and you can Google this because I'm hearing a lot of it now and I'm understanding what's going on. It's called the replacement theory. Google the replacement theory. And the replacement theory, blessings to our ancestor, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, who spoke about genetic annihilation. That's what this is. They see it and they know that they are genetically being undid by the nature of who they are. It's not personal. It's science. This is their last stand. Now, you have people coming to America melanated from all over the world. You have melanated people going into Europe and the way the, the way the economy is set up is that because the European are dying out, the ones that still live need a tax base. So the reason why they're bringing uh, uh, folk from other parts of the world to Europe is not because they like them. They need a tax base in order for their country to survive. They say that by the end of this century, Italy will no longer exist. Don't believe me. Read the books I told you. Because it's in those books. What I'm telling you is what they what they say in their books. I'm not making this up. And I'm not trying to be funny. I am not trying to start any situation. I'm just asking us as an African, African-American people to understand the conditions that we're living in and what's happening to us. And what has happened to us. And the greatness that resides within each and every one of us that we can make this happen. And it's going to be African-Americans because nobody in America understands this better than us. There is a certain understanding amongst indigenous people, but that's a whole nother kind of conversation. I'm talking about African-American people. And what they all know is that be you Asian, be you African who speaks Spanish, because that's how I see you, you know, I don't see you as anything other than black. Be from Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Puerto Rico. You're black, okay? Whether you admit it or not, whether you accept it or not, that's on you. I'm just looking at science. <laughs> and if you are what they call Hispanic, it's the same thing with Arabs. To be an Arab, you have to be black. That's what made you the, the, the mixture. What made you an Arab is the fact that the foundation of your society until about 2000 BC that anything changed. So, with this in mind, with everything that we're going to talk about in mind, I'm a teacher, so I got to give you a homework assignment. And my homework assignment is for you to Google and get a, a sense of what happened during the red summer of 1919. Because 
Family, when you look at what happened in America in 1919, you will understand what's happening now. And even though that may be like, what, 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 uh, 22, 23 years ago, okay. Nothing has changed with them. What's changed is us. And so I encourage us uh, to look that, because the next time I come to you, next time we do a Instagram Live, I want to talk about the Red Summer of 1919. And to show you the similarities, we talked about synthesis. I, I want to show you the, the relationship and what actually happened during the Red Summer, why it happened. Because so many of us get a sense that immigration, bringing people from Europe to America, started like in the 1900s. No, it, no, it didn't. It started in the late 1800s. And that was to displace African people from being able to be successful. And out of that decades-long struggle for them, coming from Europe, with World War One, not ended, but in the process of ending, with the advent of the airplane and the violence that World War One brought. And so you can't understand World War One if you don't understand the Berlin Conference of 1885. But again, we're going to put all that in context when we talk about the Red Summer. Because nothing has changed with them. It's all the same. They're still fighting the same battle. And black folk are just doing what they have to do to move ahead and to develop their civilization. And so it becomes important that we look at this from a perspective that we know who we're dealing with, what we're dealing with, and how we can deal for our children's sake and what it is that they have to understand and see. So with that, family, I want to thank you uh, for tuning in. Like I tell you, I truly appreciate your time. Time is the most precious thing we have, so thank you for sharing your time. My purpose is to bring information for us to understand and for each and every one of us to realize that we are the creator having a human experience and that our destiny is in our hands, not in anyone else's hands. Don't be looking outside of yourself for what you have to do for you. Because once you do for you what you got to do, everything else becomes an obstacle to be gotten over, and then you just do what you have to do. This is our time. It may not seem like that, but this is our time. And I think that Harriet Tubman did what she did for this time. I think that Frederick Douglass did, Malcolm X did, Martin Luther King did. They may have lived back then, but what they did made it possible for today to exist. And I salute us for that. And I respect us for that. We have a lot more work to do. But once we know what it is that we have to do, let's just do it. Family, stay safe, stay healthy. Enjoy your weekend. Keep on keeping on. It ain't over till we win. Hotep family. So. Growing up in black skin dominated communities here in Africa, we've always wondered why some individuals, especially our palm color counterparts, had the skin that they had. And most people in villages or places that do not have people with lighter skin were always fascinated by these individuals. You know, it is very fascinating how, because of skin differences, people are able to place you in a certain height and how community has come to respect people based on the colors of their skin. And we've also seen depictions of historical figures spiritual leaders being whitewashed because this narrative is so important that it has to be sold to us to be able to appreciate the palm color skin well now that we've appreciated it and we've seen the implications of that this whitewashing and depiction of false narratives has serious consequences because it conceals the truth from us and as we've heard from that video they are very very important facts highlighted and as we get to unpack this the truth will become more and more revealed
Since the 1800s, a series of conflicts known as race wars have punctuated history, occurring before significant events like the Civil War. These conflicts stemmed from the resistance of black communities against slavery. Even after the semblance of freedom was achieved, discriminatory laws have continued to perpetuate inequality, targeting minorities such as the Hispanics in a recent legislation in Oklahoma. Our recent video got into this issue and highlighted the laws and the profound consequences that historically favored certain groups while discriminating against others. This pattern of enacting controversial bills to serve one group's interests at the expense of another is persistent throughout history, emphasizing the enduring struggle against systemic discrimination. Now, let's get into a profound book that was shared by our presenter today, which is The Unaliving of Europe by Douglas Murray. The contemporary challenges facing Europe come under sharp focus. Murray dives into the complex issues of immigration, identity, and Islam that are reshaping the continent's cultural landscape. Murray contends that Europe's historical civilization stands at the crossroads, threatened by the confluence of mass migration, declining birth rates, and a crisis of faith in its own values and heritage. One perspective highlights Murray's analysis is spot on. Europe is facing an existential situation, and we need to address these issues head on if we want to preserve our cultural heritage. There's another perspective when I was researching that highlighted that this book is nothing but fear mongering and and exphobia. Murray's arguments are simplistic and ignore the complexities of immigration and integration. There were two other compelling perspectives that stood out while I was doing the search for the book and one perspective also said, I found Murray's insights deeply troubling but undeniably thought-provoking. It is essential to confront the uncomfortable truths he presents. And then there was a last perspective that said, I disagree. Murray's narrative is biased and overlooks the contributions of immigrants to European society. We should be embracing diversity, not fearing it. So this book is a very controversial book and sparks a lot of of discussions especially online if you're doing the search if you have not read the book you're gonna see a lot of discussions concerning this book whether held as a profound masterpiece or criticized as a depressing tom the strange and aliving of europe sparks important conversations about the future of a continent grappling with profound cultural shifts for those seeking a deeper understanding get into Murray's work or explore the myriad reviews and analysis available online now let's get into the perspective of another book the beth death by Ben J. Wattenberg. The declining birth rates in developed countries take center stage in this book. Wattenberg delves into the potential ramifications for the economy, society, and culture as birth rates continue to plummet. Through a historical lens, Wattenberg explores how birth rates have steadily declined over time, painting a sobering picture of a future with a shrinking workforce and a burgeoning elderly population. Now, there are two perspectives that I want to share with you. The first one said, Wattenberg's insights are invaluable. Valuable. We are facing a demographic crisis that could have far-reaching consequences for our economy and social fabric if left unchecked. And then there was another perspective arguing with this one, saying while Wattenberg raises valid concerns, his proposed solutions may be too simplistic. Addressing declining birth rates requires comprehensive policies that tackle underlying socioeconomic factors. The Beth Death sparked intense debate upon its release, with critics divided over Wattenberg's dire predictions and proposed solutions. Yet, its influence in shaping the discourse on demographic changes cannot be understated. For those seeking a deeper understanding of this pressing issue, consider getting into Wattenberg's comprehensive analysis within the pages of his book. Now that we've seen the summary of these two profound books, let's get into the mutation of animals from their original skins to white skin or light skin. So, the possibility of animals mutating to have white skin is very well documented and can occur due to various factors, often as an adaptation to their environment. For instance, in humans, a genetic mutation led to lighter skin tones as populations moved north from Africa, which was advantageous for vitamin D synthesis in areas with less intense sunlight. In the animal kingdom, similar mutations can occur. A notable example is found in three species of desert lizards at the White Sands National Park in New Mexico. These lizards have evolved white skins through different mutations to the same gene, which reduces the amount of dark pigment melanin 
in their skin. This adaptation provides camouflage against the white sands of their habitat. Such mutations are part of a natural selection, where genetic variations that confer an advantage in survival or reproduction tend to be passed on to subsequent generations. Over time, these advantageous traits become more common in the population. The process by which animals develop white skin can be complex and is influenced by a variety of genetic, environmental and evolutionary factors. So, we've seen that it is possible for black to turn into white, but is the vice versa true? Can white turn back to black? Let's carry on now. Let's look at depigmentation. Now, this refers to the loss of normal pigmentation, which results in the lightening of the skin or complete loss of pigment. This can occur due to various local and systemic conditions. The pigment loss can be partial, such as from an injury to the skin or complete, as seen in conditions like vitiligo. Michael Jackson. It can also be temporary, like from tinier vesicular and permanent as in albinism. In medical treatments, depigmentation can be intentionally induced using chemicals such as monobenzone or mecunol, which can lead to dramatic skin whitening. I've seen this happen before. However, these treatments are usually specific to certain conditions and are not without risks, so they must be used under medical supervision. Now, let's get into a hypothetical sci-fi situation. Imagine if the world had no sunscreen or protective measures against the UV radiation. The skin damage and related disorders would significantly increase, hypothetically, right? The skin could suffer from immediate effects like sunburns and long-term damage such as premature aging, wrinkles, and an increased risk of skin cancers like melanoma, as discussed in the previous video, sequimous cell carcinoma, and basal cell Casanoma. Severe climate conditions such as higher temperatures and increased UV radiation due to ozone layer depletion would exacerbate these risks. The skin's ability to maintain homeostasis would be challenged, potentially leading to a rise in continuous diseases, heat-related illnesses, and infections. The absence of sun protection could also lead to a higher prevalence of conditions like acnetic keratosis, which are precancerous skin growths. Yeah, so don't get worried, my friends. This is just a hypothetical sci-fi situation if you have a melanated uh, dominant skin you shouldn't worry right in closing I have a very interesting question for all of us here if our palm color counterparts have a disdain or hate for us based on our skin color why are they increasingly gravitating towards neighborhoods or communities that are black dominated now this phenomenon is evident not just in the United States but across the globe with mass migrations to places like Kenya and South Africa this question demands attention and introspection from all of us. Is it a case of curiosity, genuine interest, or perhaps an acknowledgement of the vibrancy and richness of our cultures, or just a survival tactic? Or is it a complex interplay of societal dynamics and economic forces? Regardless of the answer, today's discussion sheds light on a thought-provoking aspect of our world. If you found the exploration enlightening and insightful, consider subscribing to our beautiful channel. Here, we are committed to fostering understanding, challenging norms, and and empowering our viewers with knowledge that transcends boundaries. As we navigate through these complexities, let us remember to stay blessed, stay compassionate, and continue seeking understanding in our quest for a more inclusive and equitable world. Until next time, signing off for now.